What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and on today's episode of Operation Overhaul we are working on an 05 Forerunner Limited it does have the 4.7 V8 and we're going to be doing a timing belt on this and when we're doing this we're going to go ahead and do a water pump because it does get turned by the timing belt on one of these so and right now I do have the coolant draining I hate how they got it set up because it does come out in like multiple spots if you have the front um, pan underneath there but the drain valve is on the bottom on the driver's side and you can reach in through the tire and open it up it's just like a little butterfly valve type thing and you can do that and it'll start draining but if you do have that little skid plate underneath there we'll run onto that and get uh, like four or five spots that have come out of so but we do have a couple cardboard pieces to kind of contain that as much as possible so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull this cover off pull the intake right here and some of these hoses right here as well and then what I'm going to do is actually pull the fan off with the uh, shroud and all that stuff too and get this overflow tank out of the way so we can get lot clearer view of what's down inside of here y'all can see we got a little bit further and we took the upper radiator hose the fan the fan shroud the belt the overflow tank and this front piece right here like a air down valence thing that goes over the radiator and stuff like that and i'll show you what all it takes to get that stuff off in just a second but right here on the snout of that uh, housing where the fan goes that fan can get stuck on there because you can tell it's a little rusted and the back of the fan is like like it got stuck right here so i just used a pry bar and a hammer and it's a striking pry bar and i just tapped on it a few light times i'll show it to you right here and i just tapped on it right down in here you can probably see that little mark right right there but that's where I hit it I hit it about three times and then she popped right off here is your fan shroud it's just two 10 millimeters on the sides and then your overflow tank bolts here here and then there's one on the radiator on the bottom of it you will have two hoses that attach to it right here and they're just like Chevy style if you've ever worked on those you just pull this back and pull up and come off and the bottom of the fan shroud just has these little tabs that it slides into here's your little valence piece you could only have about 10 of these little clips like that here is your um, air intake you'll have a hose here here and you'll have one hose clamp over there and then you got a connector right there and it slides right off sorry about that i had to take a phone call real quick but uh what i was saying was we got all this stuff off and next steps we're going to do is i'm going to pull this water housing right here off and pull the thermostat out because we are going to replace that and then to do that it looks like there's two bolts right here should be an o-ring in here i think there's a housing gasket right there then there's a hose right there and I want to pull this hose tube assembly right here off anyway and there's a bolt down there with another uh, bolt on the very bottom as well just so we can pull the cover and pull this fan housing off and after that I'm going to start taking the harmonic bouncer off and get these upper covers off so we can get to the lower housing but I'll bring y'all back uh, periodically to show y'all what I'm doing and to give you an update on how you take all this stuff off. I figured I'd give y'all a little bit of update. Got the cam covers off. Uh, I didn't take that off. It, I didn't think it was really needed to. I was going to do it to give y'all better access to viewing this, but I think y'all can see it pretty good from here. But we are going to change the thermostat. But we took the hose off right there. This bolt right there. Or nut held in one and then a little bit further down there was another one right there Let's see if I can get y'all in here that bolt right there but then there was four bolts along with this one 
that held this cover on and they're 10 millimeters and it come right out but to get it out we had to disconnect the throttle body this is the cam sensor right here and it goes through the timing cover there is a grommet for that and this lower one right here goes to your AC compressor but it is held in place up here and then I think two of them on the actual cover now the grommet on the front of this let me show it to you is a split grommet pull it out and you can push the sensor through here and here are the four bolts like I said those are 10 millimeters and on the other side it's only held in with three and then it has uh, that little cap nut on there but these 12s right here go through a different cover it goes through this cover right there and I think I have it where I can pull that off now if I wanted to uh, let me see if I can do that while I got y'all um. That's that other cover. That's the mid cover that covers up the idler for the time about. I'm going to set these back in here just so I know where they go. But those are 12s that held those in. But now I'm going to line up the timing marks and get it as close as I can to top dead center. And then once we do that, I'm going to go ahead and start pulling the harmonic balancer off and this uh, fan housing. Now this hose right here is going to be a kind of a pain in the butt. It's just going to want to flop around. You can take it off on the bottom. It's just one more hose clamp. But I'm just going to leave it on. It's not really like that big of a deal. But if it does get in your way, you can just pull it off if you would like. I got the timing marks lined up now. I'll try to show it to you. I can't remember any better. So we marked it in red right there and then that little notch right here on the top that's where it, you line it up to there's a little notch on the timing gear right there and there's one on the front on that one I'll try to get y'all in a little bit better see that little notch and then the T stands for timing or top dead center whichever one but you're gonna do for either one but you can see it's got that little notch and then down here we got the white line across the timing mark and we got that set at zero the crank bolt is a 21 millimeter just in case anybody is wondering which you're probably going to want to know that just because we're going to have to pull this um, harmonic balancer off but that's your timing marks right there now we'll start pulling this fan housing off and once we get that off, we can get the harmonic balancer off as well, and we can start pulling this timing belt off. We're quite a bit further along now, and I had to take the power steering pump and the alternator off just so we could get the tensioner off for the serpentine belt because uh, the lower uh, timing cover was stuck behind it. Uh, I know you could probably pull it out without taking it off, but this right here give y'all a better view of everything that's going on and to take the fan housing out or fan bracket you do have to take two bolts out of the um, or two bolts and a nut off the AC compressor Let's see if y'all can see one right there on the top and then there's that one right there on the bottom and the bottom one is a little tricky to get to it ain't too bad if you got a swivel head ratchet and some extensions but those are 14s um the crank bolt actually was a 22 not a 21 and i just used an impact and it come right out and you can slide the harmonic balancer off uh, it doesn't need to be pried off or anything this one just slid right off so we still have it in time as you can see right there right there as well maybe I can get you a better view there we go and now the next thing we're going to do is I'll do this on camera pull this cover off come on it's tight on the snout that's just your reluctor wheel 
functional. By the way, there's four bolts on this lower cover. One is up in there, and then there's three. And it's going to be a little tight getting that off just because that little clip piece right there, you'll have to pull a little bit and it should come out. More than likely, uh, if you didn't get that out, whenever you pull the cover off, that will fall down onto the pan. Mine did, and I uh, um, got it out with a magnet. Here is your bracket for your fan. Two go in right here. These are your AC. Then you got these two. There should be, I think, a stud right here, a stud right there, and then a bolt. Uh, maybe have them mixed up, but uh, that's all your locations. I'll show them all to you. Just like that. So, two, four, five, and then two more for the AC. And this little piece right here is on the AC as well. And there's a nut that holds it onto a stud. And I pulled that whole thing off just to make it easier to pull this off. Here is your belt tensioner for your serpentine two and two. And then the cover goes behind that. For the power steering pump, there is one nut and two studs, and then for the alternator, there should be two studs and one bolt. The bottom bolt was extremely tight for some reason, but we got it out, and it did thread out, just it squeaked the whole time coming out. But now, we're going to pull the uh, belt tensioner for the timing belt. It is right here. Where did I put my flashlight belt this tensioner is right there there should be two bolts that holds it in pull that out and then we can start taking the timing belt off and the water pump is right here in the center so let me go ahead and pull this tensioner and take the belt off and then I'll show you the water pump and how it comes off. You do have to take that thermostat housing off because it is part of the water pump on this engine. I forgot all about that. And as you can tell, this th uh, water pump was leaking really bad. Coming all around the uh, shaft seal. But we got all the water pump bolts out. You should have one nut, two studs, and two, four, five bolts. And the kit we have come with new bolts. So that's a good thing. And then there is a, right there in that little section, there is this plastic housing. You can see it had dry coolant in there. But we have uh, that out. We got all the bolts and we took the timing belt off. The tensioner come off as well. Here's the new one right here. These are your tensioners and your idlers. Um, here is your main tensioner for your timing belt. This goes up against the tensioner idler. And this is the bolt for that. That was a 14. This one right here is a 10 millimeter Allen. And then for the main tensioner, that's two 12s. But, and then all the bolts for the water pump or 12s, even the nut and those two bolts, but you're going to need a deep socket or you can use a wrench and get that. Here's the kit right there. Does like I said, it has the gaskets, got the seals, the idler, the tensioner, the tensioner pulley, the gasket, and all that stuff. So let me get the part number for you. Here's the timing belt also. And it does have timing marks on it. Here's your crank. I think the first one should be your right side. And then there's your left. I like it when they do that. It is an import direct from O'Reilly's, not a sponsor, but that's who we got it from. Part number is 20394K. Now that we got all the bolts out, we're going to see if we can get this in. She is on there pretty good. Tap it with a mallet. May have to pry on it. 
I can about guarantee she is stuck on there. Let me get a pry bar. You can hear it. She is separating. We should see coolant start coming out. There it is, it's on a pipe back there. got the water pump on there pretty much kind of just hand tight at the moment if I can get this to stay out of the way but it comes with the new bolts they give you six bolts but you only need five I guess the sixth one is just in case you take the stud out you can reuse this one instead but I just wanted to give y'all a torque spec on this and it says to go over it and two passes the first pass it says to do it at eight foot pounds on each one of them and then on the second pass the studs torque to 13 foot pounds and then the bolts torque to 16 foot pounds so we're going to go around and torque them to eight first and then we'll come back and do 16 on the bolt 13 on the studs so let me torque this down and then i got the new o-ring on the back of here also it's the o-ring attaches to the pipe i put a little bit of like vaseline around the part on the back and i'll show it to you this is the old one but I put a little bit of Vaseline right here inside just so the o-ring will slide in without tearing and I do have to clean the thermostat housing of the silicone because that old one has silicone this one actually comes with a metal gasket that goes on just like this but I do have to clean the thermostat housing so and those right there torque to 16 as well so we got the timing belt on now you can see this lines up with the marks that one does and then we got the crank down there lined up we got everything on everything looks good i already pulled the pin for the tensioner i want to give you all some torque specs so the tensioner idler torques to 16 and that's a 10 millimeter uh allen bolt the regular idler torques to 27 then the tensioner itself torques to 20 and the way that i did this was i put pulled the uh, crank gear out a little bit because there is a little bit of a lip underneath there that the belt rides between that and the gear so i pulled it out put that around there after i lined up the uh, left side right here and i fed it around the idler onto that as tight as i could and then pushed it back then I lined it up onto the right side and the right side was about a tooth off this way and then I put it around the uh, tensioner gear and then once I got everything the way I wanted to I pulled this right here back in time and pulled the pin on the tensioner you want I wanted this side right here the loosest because whenever you apply the tension on the tensioner it's going to take up all the slack on this side and you don't want it on that side because that is just the drive side this right here is the tension side but now what I'm going to do is rotate it over about three or four times just to make sure everything lines back up and then nothing binds up before we close it all up I rotated it over two combustion cycles and you can see Trying to get it where y'all can see that. That one's lined up.
that one's lined up and there's a notch on the timing gear itself down there and a wool dot and that's where that lines up so everything is lined up on that after two full combustion cycles i think we should be good now i can start putting all this back together um can't remember if i told y'all to torque this these right here torque to 16 foot pounds also and you can see i put a little bit of grease on it right there to get that to slide in but now i can start buttoning up everything and we can put everything back together just remember that in order to do this you need to put the lower cover on first and don't forget your tone ring because you will hate yourself if you do that but put the tone ring on then we can get the uh cover on then we can start putting the um drive belt tensioner on and i think after that is your alternator then your power steering pump then you can put your fan bracket on then you can put your bolts back on for your ac then we can do the upper covers also don't forget this piece right here it goes between the water pump and the engine and then we can put the upper covers on put the thermostat housing and your hoses back on and start filling up coolant so let me get all this together and whenever i get through also in the instruction manual that comes with the timing belt kit gives you all your torque specs in here and gives you even a diagram of everything it's a pretty good little kit i would recommend this one i like that it's got the marks on it it is a gates belt um it's good tensioner good quality everything so it's a pretty good kit and i've pretty much uh enjoyed with working with this kit while we were in here we went ahead and changed the thermostat and put a new belt on here this is the gates micro v now i'll show it to you in just a second because it is a really nice belt actually but here's the part number to it k060882 and then you can also go off the 6pk2243 but here's the thermostat uh, part number mu551237 that thermostat does not come on a gasket so you have to get a gasket for that but that is the belt it's like a textured belt on the back and it is really nice it's kind of a bluish navy color i'm really surprised how nice that belt is normally good years are like that but that is really nice I, I like that belt i like that boulder that is a nice boulder but all we got left to do is basically put the air intake back on here put the engine cover and put coolant in it and fire up all right sitting in it now i just took it for a test drive i'm gonna crank it up one more time you can see that the temperature hand right here is where it should be just to go and drive for probably about i'd say 15 miles or so and let it come up the temperature before i took it and everything looks good there's no leaks or anything and we used about two and a half gallons of coolant to fill it up completely but she's running good running smooth no leaks and we got all the timing belt all the tensioners the idlers a 17 belt and the thermostat uh changed on this but it's pretty much it it calls for i think about seven hours to do this job and with me filming it that took about seven for me to with it uh filming and all that good stuff but if y'all got any questions comments concerns leave them in the comment section below if i left out something let me know i'll get to it as soon as possible and remember i got the patreon the instagram all that and if you want any other merchandise as well i got that and y'all remember torque this tight y'all have a great day